your baby's breech. How can you help baby flip head down? Here are 20 things you can try. Hi, I'm Melissa Evans, and I've been a childbirth educator, doula, and then some since 2004. I know how important it is for families to have quality childbirth classes under their belt before giving birth and that it's really hard to fit into schedules and budgets. So here I am offering my childbirth classes for free on YouTube. Please realize that I am not a medical professional nor a lawyer, so use common sense and talk things over with a professional that you trust. But for now, let's talk about ways to help baby flip from breech to vertex. There are lots of tools and techniques to try, from the energetic to the mechanical, from the physical to the downright bizarre, but that's okay. Some of these are easy to try at home, others need a professional, some can be done for free, and others end up having a bill. And some will work better at different points in your pregnancy. So see which options are available to you and give them a try. When we're talking about turning breech babies, there are two main categories for these techniques. The first one is making room in the uterus so the baby can turn, and the second one is actually encouraging baby to do the movement. So when we're talking about this concept of making room, the first section is going to be looking at different positions mom can take to help stretch out her uterus and keep things nice and balanced. The go-to resource for this is spinningbabies.com. Please go hang out there, research it, memorize it, give Gail Tully, my hero, a virtual high five, whatever it takes. It's an amazing, amazing website. So I'm not going to go into the depth because I'm gonna leave that to the expert and just kind of go over some basic ones here. The first most important and probably least comfortable one is an inversion. The goal of this is to literally make mom's torso be inverted, upside down. Most moms will find it easiest to start on their hands and knees and then kind of crawl backwards and put their knees up on the couch, putting their bum in the air. The elbows stay down on the ground, the neck is nice and loose. The other option is to start with your knees on the couch, on the very edge, and then lower yourself to your hands and then go down to your elbows. And yeah, you feel inverted. All that blood does come rushing to the head. Ideally, you're gonna do this for 30 seconds and that might not be quite so achievable the first try, and that's okay. Do it for 10 seconds and build your way up. You will acclimate to it, I promise. Coming down can also be a little bit tricky. It's usually easiest to crawl back down. It's also possible to push yourself back up onto the couch, but that's really not so comfortable unless you have a partner who can help you with it. The goal of the inversion is twofold. It helps get the baby out of the pelvis to help unstick baby so that baby has the opportunity to turn. It also helps stretch the lower ligaments and kind of increases the comfort along the way. So even though the exercise itself doesn't feel very good, the after effects are kind of nice. After doing an inversion, then there is the famous breech tilt. This is the go-to, the only one that's really uh, talked about <laughs> in Hollywood. The famous ironing board exercise. I don't own an ironing board because I don't own clothes that require ironing. I don't know what that says about me as a person, but there you go. So I'm gonna use a whiteboard instead. The goal here is again, using gravity, getting baby out of the pelvis, think, keeping things nice and relaxed and giving baby room to move. Number three are pelvic tilts. This is really similar to yoga cat cow, but it is different. Not that there's anything wrong with yoga cat cow, that is my very limited understanding of yoga. And if you're a yoga instructor and wanna correct me in the comments, please feel free to educate me but cat-cow is intended to be a back spine exercise. A pelvic tilt is actually all in the pelvis. It's closer to twerking, I'm sorry. It can be a very fast movement, unlike cat-cow, don't really care what you're doing with your neck or your breath. It's simply twisting your pelvis, pulling your tailbone down, and well, you're kind of sticking your bum up in the air, and it goes pretty quick. This looks ridiculous. If you have dogs, they might come over and start sniffing, hey mom, what you doing? It's great. 
but it gets baby out of the pelvis. It relieves the lower back pressure, which is phenomenal. It gets your kid off of your bladder. It's amazing. Do a few of these before bedtime. You might actually get just a little bit longer and I'm all about getting my sleep. So doing a set of 30 of these a few times a day can help encourage baby out of the pelvis so that baby has the room to turn. The fourth position is a side lying release. This actually helps balance the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor is a hammock-like muscle that goes around the vagina, the urethra, and the rectum. And if one side is higher than the other, it can cause baby to get into some pretty funky positions. So mom lies on her side as close to the edge as she can with her shoulders stacked and her hips stacked. Her partner needs to be in front of her. I'm doing this on my own because I'm not pregnant. Once mom is nice and stacked, partner goes belly to belly and applies counter pressure to her hips. Mom's then going to take the top leg and dangle it in front so it's hanging free form, falling off the front of the couch. Her bottom leg stays straight out. Do this for five to 10 minutes. Make sure you do both sides because the whole point is for things to be equal and balanced. This exercise is also great for asynclitic babies and posterior babies and all kinds of awesomeness and we'll go into more details later, but just know it's a really cool tool and nice and relaxing to boot. Number five and six require the pool. Number five is simply going swimming. The movement, especially being in a forward leaning position, breaststroke or freestyle, can help baby be in a better position. The pressure all around from the water sometimes helps. Number six is actually doing handstands in the pool. We want mom's belly to be under the water though. So it's like aqua aerobatics, aquabatics, but the water inside and the water outside and the pressure and the gravity and all of that work together to sometimes help baby to move. The next group is when we start moving to actually encouraging baby to move, not just giving them the space and the opportunity, but actually nudging them in that direction. First, we're gonna look at some mental exercises. Number seven is talk to your baby. Explain to baby what you want, what you need, the consequences if baby stays breech. But do understand that sometimes baby is breech for a really good reason, and that's how baby needs to be born. So this isn't a demanding, this isn't a forcing, this is a requesting with respect. I really do trust babies. And again, in my previous video, we talked about what you can do if baby isn't able to cooperate with your wish. Number eight is visualizations. Imagine in your head the image of baby not only turning, but being vertex, being head down, chin to chest, hands to chest. We really like that. So not just sending baby the words and the thoughts and the feelings, but also the images. And number nine is hypnosis. This is taking visualization to a whole new, really powerful level. Hypnosis is the ability to shift subconscious beliefs. And because our subconscious beliefs run most of our lives, it can be a really powerful tool for change in many areas of life. And flipping a breach is no exception. There are some links down in the description for some hypnosis tracks that might be useful to you. Our next four techniques use sensory input to make baby want to be head down. Babies like light. So if you go into a dark room and uh, shine a flashlight on the lower part of your belly to encourage baby's head to come see what's going on. Another option is to play music. We're not talking rock concert, super loud, ear damaging type volume levels, but nice music at reasonable levels to help baby be a little bit curious and come towards the source of that, or do both. Number 12 is using hot and cold. Babies like warm, put that down low. Babies don't like cold, put it up high. Kind of scares them into turning around. Number 13 is using essential oils. Peppermint and myrrh are referenced in this book. I am not an aromatherapist. I would highly suggest talking to someone who is well-educated, not just a salesperson, or a good reference book into the dilution and the process and the frequency and the quality of the oils and all of that. Peppermint is very much using the ice pack. Babies don't like it, they run away from it. Speaking of professionals, the last 
exercises all do require one. Number 14 is regular chiropractic adjustments. Again, keeping you nice and centered and balanced and your uterus nice and centered and balanced gives baby that opportunity to move. And it relieves a lot of pregnancy discomforts and has been shown to have shorter labors and chiropractic's pretty stinking amazing. Number 15 is a very specific chiropractic technique called the Webster technique. This is specifically designed to help malpositioned babies get into a nice position for birth. It is a specialized certification that some chiropractors have and may be worth looking into. Number 16 is talking to an acupuncturist. I know the needles might not sound like too much fun. They're really, really thin though. If you really don't like the needles, there's also simply acupressure where you simply provide some stimulation. I'll even put a worksheet down in the description that has some really cool acupressure techniques for pregnancy and birth, including helping turn a breech baby. Number 17 is a very specific acupressure puncture technique called moxibustion. This is a moxa stick. It gets lit and creates some nice warmth. The point that this gets hovered over, you don't touch, not burning, hovered over is the outside edge of your pinky toes nail. I am not an acupuncturist. Talk to someone who knows what they're doing about how frequently, when in pregnancy, how long to hold it, and all of that goodness. Many moms will find that babies start moving a lot, and most moms find it to be rather relaxing. They sleep pretty darn well that night. Speaking of relaxing, number 18 is a massage. Having you be mentally, physically, emotionally relaxed can help encourage baby to turn. If you have anyone in your community who is knowledgeable about my abdominal massage, that would be even better. Number 19 is talking to a homeopath or naturopath who is knowledgeable about homeopathy. Uh, this is an over-the-counter medication. The most common remedy for breach is homeopathic pulsatilla. Again, talk to a professional when it comes to dosing, frequency, quantity, and all that goodness. Homeopathy is a very different modality. It is energy medicine. I sound like a complete and total hippie, and I know that because I'm a software engineer by training, but if you want, I could totally nerd out on you. I'm just not gonna bore you in this video. It can be pretty powerful. This is over the counter at your local health food store. Number 20 is an external version. This is something that is typically done by an obstetrician and only by an obstetrician. This is when they physically, typically forcefully turn baby into the right position. Most care providers will not do this unless you are in a hospital setting because there is the potential to put baby into distress and require an emergency cesarean. Many care providers will want mom to have an epidural because it can be a rather violent procedure. A friend of mine did have the epidural and the version and she still felt it through the epidural. So it can be intense, let's say. Many care providers will want to induce immediately afterwards because they don't want to let baby have time to flip back to breach. They want to really just lock that in and go with it. Now please note, all of those other 19 options can help a version go gentler and have a higher rate of success. And once again, I'm going to harp on the fact that your choice of care providers is really important because if your baby is breech and your care provider can only offer a version or a cesarean, that might not be the toolbox that you want for your birth. When I was pregnant with this little guy, um, at 34 weeks, we found out he was breech. And I think I did 16 out of these 20 exercises. And he, in his cooperative sweetness, did in fact turn vertex for me. And we were able to successfully have our home birth safe and sound. I can't tell you what worked. I'm kind of a throw everything at the wall and see what sticks kind of person. So what a about you? Do you know? Have you tried any of these? Do you actually know which one worked? <laughs> or are you kind of a shotgun kind of person like I am? Let me know in the comments. Please like this video, subscribe, share it with your friends. I'll be working on posting new classes every week and I don't want you to miss out. Until next time, know your options and own your birth.